I'm here with Gia Grant, who's the Executive Director for the San Francisco Clean City Coalition. Gia, tell us a little bit about your organization and why you're out here today and, and what, what role the environment, uh, the neighborhoods play in the environment. Great. Well, Clean City's mission is cleaning, greening, and beautifying San Francisco. Uh, we have a variety of programs. We do a lot to employ low-income people um, doing neighborhood beautification projects. Uh, this is important because we got to bring together the stakeholders. we got to get together. It's a big mission uh, to take care of our city and maintain our city. Uh, we need to get together, work together. It's great to have the opportunity to have workshops, uh, teach people about, you know, the environmental piece as well, not just the maintenance. One of the other things that Clean City does is we actually act as a fiscal agent. So if neighborhood groups or merchant associations, they want to plant trees in their neighborhood, they want to put benches, they want to do any kind of you know, recycling efforts, we work with them to house their money, do fiscal sponsorship, but also provide technical assistance. Um, you know, one individual can make an impact, but a group of individuals can really you know, work to improve a whole neighborhood. And that's really true. I mean, for a lot of people, the ability to plug in a light bulb or turn off the lights, that's a skill they know. But when we want to take it to the next level, like I want to apply for a community challenge grant or I want to do something different, the bottom line is is that they need someone like you to explain them that process and, and afford them the resources to manage those kind of grants. Is that true? Absolutely. Like you're saying, there's lots of groups that do the work. I mean, we're just one of many that are working to, you know, make positive change in the city. But when we work together, you know, we do a lot of referrals. It's just getting through the city, you know, you know, as well as anyone, the web of, you know, city agencies and, you know, guiding people through that. So Clean City really hopes to, you know, play a role in that and build the city for our future. Um, Got to take care of our kids in our future. Amen. We're going right there right now. So we're here with Patrick Farjas, who is the chef instructor from the California Culinary Academy. We do this amazing cuisine we had today. Chef, tell us a little about the food today and, and why you guys want to get uh, engaged out here in the neighborhood. Well, first of all, the, the CCA, the California Culinary Academy, is always involved in a lot of different charities. Uh, all year long, we try to do a thing and try to help the community of San Francisco and around it. The, the food we had today was uh, completely organic. Baby vegetable was the only idea that we had on everything. So we had baby fennel, baby uh, carrots, baby almost everything, beets, anything you can imagine was on those uh, trays and table today. You know, years ago, uh, uh, the, the food, especially in the U.S. that you were eating, was just uh, fast grown. Now people are a little more aware of what's organic and because of their health. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the number one thing, health and uh, flavors. For us as professional culinary people, uh, it's mostly flavors and size of the vegetable. Organic is slow grow and we pick them small, but the flavor are way more developed than the big uh, things. You know, when I came in the 80s, you, uh, I was asking for a carrot, I was getting the thing that we feed the animals with in France. So for me, it was a new start. So I started to have actually a lot of farmers working with me. The food that's grown in the other part of the country or other part of the world is going to be more expensive because the fact it has to be shipped here and, and driven and consumes a lot of gasoline and other petrol resources. So do you see a lot of people talking about growing their own food and growing it locally now? More and more. Yes, definitely. All the people who can have, uh, actually, even uh, school uh, all around, you know, there is East Palo Alto who has a school who is growing their own vegetables. You have the people on the East Bay with Berkeley and, uh, uh, you know, Alice Water program with Auckland and Berkeley. There's a lot of uh, chefs who are involved in, in people's, you know, awareness to, to bring them up to what they can bring to their own house. Even if they have only a balcony to grow vegetables or, ve or herbs, it's good enough for yourself to, to get some flavor in your food. We both know that there's no way, better way to start a community than to put a great plate of food out and have people share it together. So we really want to thank you very much. So Daniel Holmesy here again at the Clean and Green Summit, and I'm here with Brent Shulkin, who's with Carrot Mob. You may recognize his face because he's always making expressions like this, wondering what corporations are doing, what the government doing is about the environment, and he's actually got an idea about what you can do about the environment. So Brent, tell us about Carrot Mob and, and why it's become so popular, and what you think the future is for Carrot Mob and the neighborhoods in the area of environmental action. Thank you. Well. Uh Basically what Caramob is, is a network of consumers that is going to, we're going to use our collective buying power to create financial incentives for businesses and companies to go green. And so what we've done in the past is we've started an experimental model where we get people to, we, we basically have an economic competition between local businesses. In this case we did, the first campaign we did was uh, local liquor stores and small grocers in San Francisco. 
and we basically said which of you is going to make the strongest commitment to do something environmentally friendly. Uh, and we had this sort of competition and then the winner gets the business of everyone in the mob. Everyone goes and, and you know, supports their business and sort of makes it worth their while to do something for the planet. Corporations will do anything for money. Yeah. Could be a negative or corporations <laughs> will do anything for money. They don't do things that hurt the environment because they're evil. They do it because their eyes on the profit ball. And if we say, all right, we're going to actually get a bunch of people together and become that profit ball, then suddenly you're going to follow us because we are the profits. So that's what we want to do. And it's worked really well on a small scale and we want to keep that going and also take it up a notch where we can say, go to these global brands and say, we've got a million people all around this country. Let's say, which, of, you know, which brand of soap do we want to start buying together? We need to, as environmentalists, get our fingers into all these, all these little places where we can make change and leverage all these, all these companies because they're so powerful. I know you can just type in Carrot Mob on Google because I do it five times a day to show people <laughs> your great video. I recommend that our friends watch and do the same thing, learn more about this organization, and then like Brent, think outside the box and figure out what you can do to make a difference in your neighborhood from an environmental standpoint. Thanks a lot, Brent. Thank you very much.